A unique visual element of mature rivers is the meander. It's winding and curving. But how do rivers curve? When water comes from its source, it takes the path of least resistance, going downhill whenever it can. When a river reaches flat plains, it will continue to go straight until there is some sort of disturbance, either by animals or a different type of rock. Once it begins to curve, Newton's first law of motion becomes involved. Since an object in motion, such as water, continues to be in motion until acted upon by something else, the river's forces do not automatically bend with the course of the river. Instead, the water continues at full force straight ahead until it hits the outer part of the curve. This section is a cut bank and erosion is prominent and strong. As the river continues to erode the cut bank, slowly changing the course of the river on the outside curve, water on the inside curve begins to slow down. Since rapidly moving water is able to carry heavier objects, the slower water becomes, the more sediment and debris is deposited. The water on the inside curve slows down, dropping different forms of sediment and rock. Over time, this forms new land, called point bars. As a result of both cut banks and point bars, the river's course is diverted. Once this process happens once, it alters the direction of water, causing the same process to repeat itself, which is why there's rarely one curve on a river. When the river meanders, it often meanders so much that different parts of the river bump into each other. Naturally, the river takes the path of least resistance, and the long loop becomes useless. The river then deposits sediment separating the loop from the main river. If this loop dries out, it is a meander scar. If water remains, it is known as an oxbow lake, or in Australia, a billabong. And until next time, thanks for watching.